So guys, the Catholic Bishop of Sokoto State has sent a very strong signal to the Chief Justice of the Federation he has told him that Nigerians are looking up to him, you know, to handle all these petitions that have been filed properly. Let me read out what he has got to say. It's so sad that your heart and reputation is undergoing very severe stress and pressure from those who want justice on their own terms. Nigerians are looking up to you to reclaim their trust in you as the interpreters of the spirit of our laws. So guys, the Bishop of Sokoto State is telling our Chief Justice of the Federation that all eyes are on the judiciary. Everybody is looking up to the judiciary. We want them to, you know, redeem themselves, redeem the image of the judiciary. Because, you know, there are speculations that these judges will not be able to deliver justice. I tell you, we know that one of the ex INEX staff was on Arise TV and he said so many things about the judges. I'm going to allow you to watch that video. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel, turn on the notification bell. Please give this video a like so that YouTube can recommend it to others. And let me know what you think in the comment section below. Thank you. The judiciary in political matter and the illusion that, which of course, quite indicative of the collapse of politics and the illusion that the court can come up to fill the void which is not possible in any case what you can only do is to damage our judiciary now dr abati history is the graveyard for contending opinions today we are now in court over the election that have been conducted. Now, what can we learn? What message do we need to give to ourselves with respect to the ongoing tribunal that's ongoing? Having regard to what happened in the US, in United Kingdom, particularly which is going to be my major reference point in this conversation today. Dr. Abadi should be noted by way of giving this background information that the United Kingdom, that today is one of the countries that all our people, they go to, they in fact, after Nigeria, they go to the UK. It should be noted that even the UK that introduced Nigeria to election rigging for a period of 99 years, almost 100 years, there have been no post-election adjudication in the United Kingdom. Why? At the beginning of the practice of democracy in the 19th century, when election rigging, vote buying, because it's on record, electoral historians have documented you know, evidence showing clearly that the UK, America, Russia, Latin American country, particularly the UK and US, were the most notorious countries for vote buying in, in, the, in the 19th century. And what did they do? At that time, the concern was that they were using landlords, they were using employers of labor, there was voter intimidation, and of course, vote buying. Election was not a one-day affair. Election was for several days. In order to deal with issues about vote buying, to deal with electoral manipulation in England, they reduced election to a day event by virtue of the 1832 Act. Now the question was, when there was fraud, manipulation, vote buying, what was the response? How was petition treated? Election petition initially in England was never entertained by the court of law. What was the reason? The reason was that if, if uh, pressure in England could buy votes, could buy landlords, could buy employer labor to compel people to vote, that there was no way they would not do that in the judiciary. That, that would lead to the capture of the judiciary in England. They now said, look, we must not allow that to happen because politicians are capable of doing that. So they declined that the court 
should not entertain election petition in England because it will lead to what is called judicial capture. They will, they will corrupt judges. They will have judges in their pocket in England. That was why they took that decision. And so what happened? They said all petitions should be taken to the parliament. Now in parliament, because of majority and minority situation in the parliament, petitions from opposition party never saw justice, never saw the light of the day. And that went on for several decades in UK. At, when we got to a point, at that time, at 18, 18, 32, they now realize that the only way to go is to now to go back to a different arbiter, to go back to the court. But to do so, what did they do in England? They decided that the very reason why they didn't want court to entertain what they call election petition, that they need to protect judiciary because without the rule of law, without an independent judiciary, it would be difficult, if not impossible, to sustain democracy. And so what did they do? At that time, the Australian people have already discovered what we call the secret balloting. Because remember, Dr. Abati, that voting historically was an open balloting system before now. It was when the Australian people now came up in 1856 with the what they call the Secret Ballot Act that were resisted in England, were resisted in the United Kingdom. But when they now decided that, look, see, there are no electoral justice in England, that the matter must go back to the court, that led to the 1872 Act, the 1872 Secret Ballot Act of 1872. That also added to it what you call consequence for any politician who had with their, either their agent, because just as we have agents here, they also had agents in England, that if you are found for election rigging, you will be expelled from parliament and also banned from participating in for six years. Even despite that, there were also evidence that what was going on. They now passed the 1883 Act that placed a ban for life from participating in politics. All right. When they did that, it was at that point that the matter was now, let me just land on this, the matter was now taken to, to the court in England. Now, in England, the judges were conscious, they were very mindful of their integrity of the judiciary. And that is why in England, politicians are afraid of the judiciary, they are afraid of judges, because the judiciary can never be a safe heaven. So, all matters that came to the court, they were so treated strictly to discourage people coming to the court so that people can return back to the polling way. That is why for a period of 99 years, there have been no post-election adjudication until 2010, when the Liberal Democrat brought a kind of, ups, uh, uh, when it came up okay. and won election and, and ups, uh, actually disrupted the process Mr. for Gini. a period of 99 years. So the question is, why is it that in our country we continue to go to the court with all, all the negative perception that is now surrounding our judiciary? So all right, this Mr. is where Gini. we are. Okay, thank you very much for that opener, very important for laying the foundation for our conversation this morning. If we hear you right, are you saying that the court or the judiciary should not be dependent on with regards to electoral matters? But before you respond to that, I just want that's just to clarify what you've said. The reason why people would go to court and even the APC who won the presidential election kept egging their um, opposition or their opponents to go to court because the belief is that if you're not satisfied with the conduct, conduct of the elections or perhaps certain aspects of the elections or the emergence of the winner, then you have your right to go to court. If the elections are conducted free, fair and widely considered credible, then the issues or the basis for a petition would not even be found. I'd like you to respond on this grounds to the to INEX response and uh, petition response to the to the PDP's petition response saying that Beavers was not designed for the um, immediate transit transition transmission of results 
or to collation centers because you spoke a lot about beavers before the elections and what a number of nigerians had been assured was that beavers was the game changer it was going to make the elections as transparent as possible in their response as well they mentioned that irev that's the um you know that irev was not designed to for, to, for collation of results either which is contrary to what a number of people had believed and what you had also um you know said when you were here before the elections i'd like to get your thoughts on that is INEC moving away from what they initially said or are they moving away from what they initially said or has this been the case right from time was this your understanding as well Uh, Ayo, thank you very much. Again, let me restate uh, a part of my opening remarks about the fact that issues of conformity to or deviation from established norms, the Electoral Act, regulations and guidelines, are already now the issues before the tribunals. And as a lawyer, those are domains which will live for them now. But the most important message of which is part of this engagement this morning is that the judges, the judiciary must be mindful of its place in the affairs of our society, particularly in the practice of democracy. And that is why I am given the historical background. It is not because that in all human activities, when there is disputes, the place to go to is the court of law. But I have said that the judiciary in England, judges in England, they were mindful of the fact that if the court of law is now made to answer political questions, such as who is a candidate the political party as we have seen, with all the aberration we saw during the polit political party primaries, the fear in England was that there would be a capture of the judiciary. Today, in our country, you could see politicians bragging all over the place, something that is unheard of in England, of judges, their friends, that they can do whatever they get, they say go to court, that is what they tell you every time. The reason why that has been so, which is the lesson that I want us to draw from the experience in the United Kingdom, was that judges were so strict to discourage people to come to the court. That is, by delivering justice according to the law, both substantive and procedural, whenever there is a violation of a procedure, you will be held accountable. Judges. The judiciary held political elite accountable in England. And that's why they are afraid of judiciary in England. They are afraid of judges in, in, in England. But in Nigeria, those who willfully go out to violate the track process, to undermine the integrity of public institutions, they are the first to tell you that you should go to court. So right. the question now is for judges, if for the judiciary to reflect on this, why is it there are people gleefully violate the law and they tell the opponent go to court. This is the lesson well, that we must end. That is to say that today you are the last line of defense in the um, defense of democracy and the rule of law. The judiciary must stand tall and mighty in defense of the rule of law and the process. That is the message. Yes, you've been very consistent in articulating that message, even before the election. The responsibility of the judiciary uh, to build trust, to build confidence, and to dispense uh, uh, justice. But we don't have an alternative to the judiciary that we have. Even the Electoral Act uh, uh, 2022 makes it clear in Section 149. If you are aggrieved, go to court. That's even what the uh, Electoral Act uh, talks about. But I think what we've been trying to do is to get you to offer an assessment of the elections as conducted by INEC after the process. Because before the election, we all had expectations. So what we really want to listen to is your assessment of specific issues in terms of the conduct of the election. And that is without prejudice whatsoever to the issues for determination before the various tribunals uh, 
you know, which have not even given notice of uh, uh, hearing uh, anyway. So it's not just uh, sub judice. We can still do a post mortem. We want you to attempt a post mortem, and then we can continue with the judiciary. Um, uh, uh, yeah, Doctor Abati. You know, I said there are three broad phases of the conduct of election. As a matter of fact, the 2023 election uh, process is not yet ended. So we are now at the level of the judiciary. And um, thank God that um, you have also reminded viewers, and uh, all of you are all my level witnesses, that all the issues that I needed to speak about to put ahead, like some of the issues we talk about, 25% and all of that, those were issues I spoke about, not only in the 23 election, in 2019, I presented even a table to show the direction, the thing that I expected. Now, in terms of assessment, you also recall that the Arise Television, Channels, AIT, TVC Continental, these are television that provided the platform for me to speak, to engage free without paying a dime. And after the election, you recall that two weeks after the presidential election, I also spoke and I expressed my concern about the fact that my votary had only been the process. That if the process is seem acceptable, at least by majority of people, the outcome will go without fuse. And that the whole design of the innovation that we have been working on for years, particularly those provisions that have that were resisted for 20 years, that have now changed under the 2022 Act, we are all intended to ensure that at the end of the election, that the vote of the Nigerian people should be determined finally and conclusively at the polling unit, not in the court of law, not in the court of law. My reference to the UK was how judiciary discouraged politicians from coming to the court by asking people to go to the polling unit, go to the police station, let that be determined finally and conclusively. Today, Dr. Abati, despite all of that, we have now found ourselves in the tribunal across the country to the extent that even the innovations that we have developed that have been used to conduct over one and five elections, many of you were not even challenged and all that. But because of issue of deviation from conformity to in the election, particularly what we saw in the second phase of election, where it was a case of a free for all, do whatever you like, you can go to court. Now, if you look at what's happening now, as we speak, Dr. Abati, when I talk about the implication why we must move away, why election must end finally at the, the place, at the pulling unit, is the fact that as we speak, Dr. Abati, because of this now, look at section 285. Section 285 was actually an amendment that came in on the 6th of January 2011 to streamline the time within which matters will be determined in court, where you said, the first leg is 180 days, Court of Appeal is 60 days, Supreme Court 60 days. You are the only country in the world that is having this kind of experience that you spent half a year allocated for the first stage of tribunal. And that particular look at that of governors. For someone to be a governor in Nigeria, you go through four stages. INEC after INEC, you go to that of the tribunal, from tribunal go to the appeal, from appeal go to Supreme Court. This is where we are. Now, if you look at the timeline with the innovations in INEC, unlike before, where for instance, to make a register of voters, you have to make photocopies upon photocopies with the development of the back end or the total number of accreditation. To get a register of voters now is a matter of seconds. Why do we still need this long period? Just one example that why using that people don't need that anymore. It means that, for example, what happened, look at what happened in Kenya. Within two weeks, that is done. In Mexico, within 14 days. In Ghana, same thing. We don't even need that 285 days. But these are debates, these are arguments that we have made long before this election. But it's a case of the FACON. No longer listen to the FACON. That's the problem we have. All because right. we don't need that. Because we can return back to where we were in 1979, in 1983, where people, which of course that is not the law at the moment, the law at the moment is that 
all those who have House of Assembly, House of Rep, Governor, Chief Presidential, whoever have been returned, we have to be sworn in. Then you have to go to court where you are going to spend six, six and a half. Now, the implication of this are as follows. I'm not going to say this, which is the reason why I'm worried, and I've been saying it over the years as we speak today, Dr. Abati, because of the huge generation nature of election petition. All the judges that have now been selected to be in the tribunal, all their civil and criminal docket are now on hold. Cases that have been off for over 20 years, 15 years, as we speak now, they are going to be on hold in abeyance for the next six months because the judges are on, on, a, on a video tribunal. Furthermore, cases of those who are a required what you call fundamental enforcement of human rights, right now, you cannot have that done because most of the judges are now in the tribunal sitting. Also, prisoners, those who have been in the correctional center that have been having bail applications that have been pending, they are now on hold. All of that cannot be attended to as we speak right now because everybody in tribunal. Commercial business matters, commercial matters transactions in the country today, they are on hold. Nothing can go on. Investment decision is also on hold until all these matters are resolved. This is not the way we should go. I would have told that the, with the direction of the innovations, of the technology in the system, or to ensure that immediately after election, let the business of governor kickstart immediately. Just last week, Abati, last week, somebody called me from the US that a group of consortium who are coming, who have been planning to come to Nigeria since last year, they put the entire business plan that we've got millions of dollars investment in a state in Nigeria. But they said it will be after the election. After the election, now the Nigerian counterpart would ask him his foreigner to now come. Oh, they said, look, we cannot come because we understand that your election is not yet over. We cannot make bring the huge uh, financial uh, capital to Nigeria on account of that. And now the Nigerian counterpart was telling them that look, it was a matter of a week to be over and so on and so forth. He didn't know that his counterpart had done his own due diligence. And they told him that look, it will take six months. It was on the basis of that that he called me and he put me on speaker. I didn't know, thinking that I would say something different from what he'd been told. And I confirmed to him that for governorship, it will take six months. For at the court of appeal, it will take 60 days. Supreme Court, 60 days. That was what I put that on hold. So right, what is going on is that my yeah, to, to yes. the core, when I refer to the let UK, me just, let me is just that come everything was done by judge. On the beginning, let me come in here because I would still like for you to respond to Dr. Bati's question and the question I'd answered earlier. I just want to make it be more specific again. We're talking about your assessment of the elections, very specifically around areas that you yourself had spoken about before the elections. So I'd like, you know, Bivas IREV didn't work, well, IREV didn't work in terms of transmission of results on the day, especially for the presidential results. And INEC put it down to technical glitches. Before the elections, they had talked about the, you'd given us details of how um, much had gone into the creation of Bivas and how secure it was. And the word that kept coming out was that it was a game changer. In fact, a number of people said that that inspired them to go out to vote because they felt that their votes would be valid. It would be a transparent process so their votes would count. I want you to tell us, what do you think could have happened? What could these technical glitches have been, despite the huge budget that was committed to this process and also the um, human power that was also committed to this process and your confidence? in Bivas in, in itself. I'd like you to specifically speak to that, please. And also, when you look at the assessment, even with regards to um, the some of the issues that INEC encountered, late start, some areas, um, lack of prepared um, preparation, adequate preparation, violence, despite security operatives, assurances, those are the things that people want to hear you speak about, especially from your experience as a former resident electoral commissioner. At least you have an insight into how election are run right from the you know from from inside are uh, what is it that i have not said yeah, maybe you just go back to the interview i had with uh, chasa niagolo i said everything i needed to say i have made it clear to everybody that this is not the time for people like us to be talking about the profound benefit of the beavers 
when we have some where people were killed, people were prevented from voting, there was ethnic profiling. My family had been in Lagos since the 50s in Suleri. My cousin, who was born in Lagos here, was to be beaten up in Suleri. He married to an Abekuta lady. My sister married to a Yoruba person in this Lagos. This has happened. This was not the thing I campaigned about. There was a clarion call. The clarion call was very clear. People should come out because we have used it for 105 elections. Apart from Oshu, for instance, all other elections, they were not challenged in court. What was challenged when you talk about, oh, you are not qualified, you didn't go to this school, all those governorship elections. None of them actually challenged on terms of process and procedure. But we all witnessed what happened. And the first interview I would gather was to this, to, 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 to uh, arrest television. Now you have seen that parties have exchanged briefs in the tribunal. And that's why I said, look, there is not much of the, I granted interview, but in written form, and to everybody, print electronic. And I've made it very clear that I'm still in shock about the behavior, what we saw that the conduct of political class have not complemented the reform that we have made this year. And it's a tragedy that politicians conduct them in the most shameful manner. On the election day, one of our own, a Queen's Council, a professor who had very pressing, pressing matters outside Nigeria, but he placed Nigeria interest above every other thing. He flew down to the country, to Delta State, to go and vote. What he observed was a crime scene. He called me. That how could this be? We are talking one of the finest, the most celebrated quiz cancer we are. One that even the British legal community described as one who, whatever it does not know, in law, is not worth knowing. That was what he experienced. So I am Right now, I told you that in the best of our tradition, because I've also seen lately that people are going to specific right now as to what the people have the same brief already. I mean, you were asking me to be responding to uh, the electoral management body's uh, response to petitioner's brief. I mean, why should I go into that? I can't go into that. I should not go into that. Let's wait for the court to, de to decide that. On the Bulgini. I'm sorry I had to interrupt you there to take our correspondence. Yes, so Please Ayo, yes, Ayo, that is why I'm of the view that Nigeria cannot be in, in autarky or bad parties around the world. The judiciary, the judges must remain very strict. You must discourage people to, from see judiciary as a safe haven for wrongdoing in our country. Society make progress on the basis of reward and sanction. Right now, briefs have been exchanged. It is not for me now to comment virtually. I mean, the, my, greatest, my greatest frustration for our country is that even when we see a still coming, a still seeing coming should not blind the eye. There are things that we have said over and over and over again, but yet nobody is listening. The rule of law, the first victim of the subversion of democracy is the rule of law. And that's why you just must stand tall and mighty to discourage politicians. How can you be heard in England that a politician will boast in that they will do whatever they will like, they will go to the court in England and they will get what they want. It's unheard of. That was why judges, Jonathan Sumption, the retired Supreme Court Justice of England, won of the expanding empire of the court on political matters. For anybody to think that the decline of politics can be, can be filled, that void can be filled by judiciary. It's a fundamental error. Judges, judiciary, you must prove, show to politicians that our judiciary cannot be. Look, the legal profession, it is one profession that is not just for, for aching a living at all. It is one that has a special relationship with the society in terms of order. And that's why I said, if I come to this world again, I want to be a lawyer. But this time around, I 
I will be in a bed so that I can wait for the enemies of society and see what they will do. So, Ayo, what happened? Our expectations in terms of not even having to have issued number of cases in court is likely unmet. Where did they expect that this is the way it's going to go if everybody comply with the rules and regulation as we are put in place? Today, why is it that you spend half a year to what are we writing new law? We are the only country where we spend so many years Honorable. to write a law, Honorable. then we spend half a year to want to interpret Honorable. the law that we have written. Honorable. It's, a, it's, it's a shame. You've laid out the contest, you've made your observations, you challenged the judiciary. But let's now talk about specifics, specific recommendations. You refer to section 285 of uh, the Constitution, where that's what we have in terms of time, time limitations. 285.7.6.7.9, you know, and all of that. But there is now a proposal on the table that look, by, and this is by uh, Ulisa Gbaku Bayes here, that look, the courts, the tribunals, they can resolve this within seven days. Okay? But there are people who also have another view who say, well, Section 285 is what it is. That's what the law is. That's what the lawmakers uh, have provided. Are you recommending a constitutional amendment, or do you think, as Agbakuba has recommended, that the judiciary you know, can just resolve these uh, petitions in uh, seven days? Is it possible? Considering the fact that you have also pointed out that the courts are overburdened, and there are more urgent cases that will have to be in abeyance. That's one. Number two, we go back to the Waste Commission report. One of the major recommendations in the Waste Commission report is that, look, election matters should be determined before anybody occupies political office after elections. What do you think of that? Three, some people have suggested that there should be a complete reform of the judiciary and that election petitions don't have to go all the way to the Supreme Court and that the Supreme Court should just focus more on a constitutional uh, matter. So there have been so many of these recommendations. In fact, people say the responsibility of the court should even be to ban any politician that is involved in any act of rigging from getting involved in Nigerian politics for life. So these are some of the things on the table. But what are your own specific recommendations? Thank you, Dr. Abati. Let's start from, from the issue about banning for life. That was with the measure they took in England. And that, that deter politicians by virtue of the 1883 Act, where you'll be banned for life from participating in politics. Number two, with respect to the views of the Lenin's sake, Olisa Agbakoba, is correct to the extent that he's speaking from the point of view of the current reforms in the system. As I mentioned to you before, it will take days when we're having purely manner system, for INEC, when you seek for uh, citizen of register of voters to make photocopies of copies upon copies, it will take days, no light, there's no diesel, there's no that. But right now, the extra act have made it clear that it must be provided in electronic form. So in a matter of seconds, you will get that register. So you don't need much time to do that. Furthermore, and perhaps for my far more important, Everyone who has been given job as a lawyer by INEX is 2010 that I went to the commission. All of them who are out there can, can, contract, can, can, can confirm what I'm going to say here. And that is that from 2011, Dr. Bati, when we started these innovations, and more recently, whenever you are given a brief by the commission, and you come to me where I work, I made it clear to you that look, in my jurisdiction, election was conducted. Whoever that had been returned, barring information on evidence that may not be known to me and to the commission, but if they are able to provide those evidence, we will help them in court to ensure that election is annulled. Ask all lawyers, all lawyers that have always come. I issue them a separate letter because to key in what Ulisa Bakoba is talking about. And that is that the evidential axiom 
under the Evidence Act, Section 131, we say that whoever assert eh, the existence of certain facts must prove is the reason why people believe that they can do whatever they do and they go to court and say, go to court, come and prove. But the whole essence of the, of the innovation, Dr. Abati, is to return, as I did, I will call them, that the only to prove, I am a commissioner. I presided over this election. Now there are issues with respect to the return that have, have that been made under my watch. I have a duty by virtue of you really clearly, and this is what the judges want, we need to do. They need to read very clearly section 136 of the Evidence Act, section 140 of the Ed Evidence Act, and for the purpose of this public engagement we are having today, which is the reason why I said judiciary will stand tall and mighty. Section 130, that is this of the Evidence Act, which is what this Papa is saying, because the whole of innovation is to return the duty, the responsibility to explain how a return is made to me. That was what I used to tell them, because I should be the one to explain how this return were made. Because that section says clearly, subsection so 2 of 36, that in considering the amount of evidence required to shift the burden of proof, Rega shall be heard, told by the court or opportunity of the party who is in possession of the evidence in proving what has happened. That is very clear. Go to section 140, they can go and read it. What is the point here to close on Elizabeth Kuba's uh, views on the time within which to bring this matter? It is that, as I told them, look, here in Aquaibo, here in Edo State, here in Cross River, I was the one that presided over the procedure, the process, recruited ad hoc staff, trained them, the technology that have been used, the material for the election, they are in my possession. I'm in a better position to explain how I made those returns. Go and ask all lawyers, they can confirm what I am telling you, Dr. Abati, that this is where it will go so tenuously. Because if the integrity of the process that I presided over, is called to question, Dr. Abati, it is unfair to be, you know, like what is going on right now, challenging uh, people talking about the person who have been returned, uh, both petitioner and respondent. These are innocent people, as far as I'm concerned. Because if you ask any person who, who will be returned as member of the House of Assembly, House of President, Senate, and any other governorship and all that, they don't even understand those things. It is the, the umpire. It is my son who presided over that have a better knowledge. I'm in possession of certain facts that are necessary to throw light on what has happened. So, Agbakoba is right to the extent that having regard to the innovation, we may not need that. In any case, Section 285 says within, it didn't say it must. I mean, how do you hear that about that half a year? We need half a wow. year. Are we writing a new law? That is respect to that. Now, furthermore, on the issue of, uh, but try to re re remind me of the other two issues. Um, uh, quickly, dealing that with the Waste Commission saying elections yeah. uh, petitions should be determined yeah, on, before on anybody waste. occupies Correct. office. But we have Correct. got about two minutes, or one minute to go. I, 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 will do, I will do that very quickly. But about it, look, we're in a country where whatever works for our country, we don't want to do it again. In 1979, in 1983, people were. Uh, election petition were resolved before people were sworn. When you do that, everybody will be up and doing. Nobody wants to filibuster, all right, to see that it is done. Because if you don't do that, people go into office and begin to use public money. Why you hear about billions as legal fees going on? Where do they get that money from? Finally, on OAS. Look, I've been hearing people talking about OAS report. Abati, Dr. Abati, is so fortunate that people don't talk about it. Let me be informed here that the former Attorney General and the late uh, Navdak woman, Akuyule, they were members of that committee. Do you know that there was no white paper? That the entire profile recommendation were rejected. No bill ever sent to the National Assembly. It was only President Goodluck Jonathan. When he came on board, because of his quest for credible election, he appointed Professor Jega, who was a member of that committee and what they did 
was what we did was to now start implementing it. We started the implementation by first doing what we call the biometric compilation of register. That wow. was one of the profound commendations. So, I agree totally that for sanity to prevail, in, in future, this is a proposal for the future, not for now, it's for the future. But for now, this is the position of the law. But for the future, it is better, cleaner that. Okay. Disputes are resolved before people are sworn in, so that the business of governance can take place immediately. Thank you very much, Honorable Mike Igeni, for joining us on the morning show. Too. It may not have done on us the economical implication of all these things, you know, all these election problems. It may not have done on most of us. We may not know how this thing is impacting on our economy. INEC was given so much money to prepare for this election. But look at the end result. Look at what INEC gave the Nigerian people such a poor job by INEC. So guys, you can see that INEC chairman purposely allowed all these things to happen. It was not as if these things were not preventable. They were preventable, but they allowed all these lapses. As in, how could you tell me that results were not uploaded, not even in one of the states, and you tell us that there were glitches? They just intentionally stopped results from being uploaded. And that is why Nigerians keep crying every day, because nobody is happy with the outcome of this election i mean no right thinking nigerian no patriotic nigerian is happy with the outcome of this election we would have had something better we would have had an election that you know after the 25th all these matters would have been brought to a stop but look at where we are debating as if we are yet to conduct the election look at all the noise all over the places as if this election is yet to take place these are post-election matters look at everywhere is ten stop you know so guys that is where we are today it might surprise you to know that our politicians connive with our judges honestly they connive in our they connive with our judges so that each time there is a court case it will always go in their favor when will nigeria be free and that is why the youths are asking for a new nigeria we just want a new nigeria politicians you people should let us have a new nigeria that is all we want our politicians should please allow nigerians to have a new nigeria please our politicians your retirement time has come just make way for the new generation to take over that's what we want we are tired of all these old and corrupt politicians who do not even mean well for nigeria i thought wisdom comes with age but it's so unfortunate that you know is this our old men that are corrupting and destroying nigeria please we just want a new nigeria allow us we need that space just allow us so that nigeria can breathe some fresh air so guys that is where we are today please don't forget to subscribe to my channel turn on the notification bell please give this video a like so that youtube can recommend it to others and let me know what you think in the comment section below thank you